This is Cindy with Energized Living Today. And again, I want to apologize that there are Zoom issues. The update canceled future meetings. And I'm not sure why it did that, but it did. So um, here we go. We've got to just redo, <laughs> redo them. I've got to go in and reset all of the meetings. So we're going to get it all straight, everybody. See how we need our wingman back? We do. We got to have him back here. And just again, a little reminder, honey, that's all. Yep. Just, it's uh, been tough. Mm. Been tough. It is. And how are you doing today, Mary? I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. My little kitty is here I, with all, just... of her, all of his friends. And um, thank you, everybody. Oh, so many. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm doing okay. I've been wrapping you in love and a love blanket, I feel a comfort it. blanket. And it means the world, as you know, as for Ferris, what we've been doing with him, as he has stated and shown how much it means when, not only when you're giving it, but when you're receiving it, it's so incredibly powerful. And I have always known this, but to, I got it so firsthand again that every thought and every wish that came, um, I felt was such power. So I get where he is and how powerful we all are together. And he just had a little glitch to Pumpkin said he'd be all right. <laughs> That's good. And those two communicated. All the time. All Still are. Yep. 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 So thank you for asking. And for those of you who weren't on just a minute ago when I was explaining, apparently when I did the update, they canceled my future meetings. I don't know why it did that. I didn't know it would do that. Um, I, they were still looking like they were listed. But then when I went to check on them, it said it wasn't working. So that is to do with the update. Uh, Ferris would be able to figure that out. And hopefully very soon we'll have him back because he is our tech guy. <laughs> He knows all this stuff and probably could have figured it out ahead of time. So I thank you for, for um, being patient. And I'm just not going to let this upset me. Um, Sunday, it, it kind of got to me. But I think, you know, this has just been such an emotional time. Um, so many people are going through so much. And I feel that innately. And for those of you who are empaths, you feel it as well. And then, of course, Ferris, my best friend, my business partner, going through what he has, that has been really, really hard. So I get emotional very quickly. And, um, and I think we all go through those periods of time. So just uh, bear with me just a little bit if I get a little antsy. <laughs> um, there are messages coming through. Andrew, can you read them? Um, yeah, uh, DJ is asking how's Ferris doing. Um, today, Ferris is having a really rough day. Through the night, he had a really rough night and he had a rough day, and he's having some hallucinations. And then I talked to his son, and they said that he was having a reaction to some medicine that he's on, and so that's that's what's happening. And I felt it and I had this lump in my throat and I kept calling him and I knew something was going on, but he didn't answer because he's just kind of, he's in loopy land. And they said, when I talked to the nurse, he was fine. But it's like, um, if you've ever heard of sundown syndrome, where somebody has this sundown syndrome, my dad had that and he actually got very violent. And Ferris is not violent, but he is, um, yelling, you know, kind of yelling at people and telling them they're trying to kill him and all that stuff, you know, and, and he wants to try and get out of there. And so um, it's all part of it. And Penny is saying my dad had those reactions to pain meds um, after he broke his ribs. Um, yes, those exact things. So it is common, but again, for those of us who are sensitive, we're feeling him and I've got to make sure that I surround myself, that I protect myself so I don't take on his stuff because I felt that today and I started shaking really bad and 
and um, I didn't know what was going on. And so apparently I was picking up on that. Well, yesterday was magical. Ferris was great. He was ready to get back to work. He was like, maybe I can get on the call. And I said, well, we're not going to have a call tonight. And he was bummed by it. And he just felt so energized and so good. And his energy was good. And, um, and so it was, it was a great day for him. It was a great day for me. I felt so happy yesterday. And I started getting all these different downloads. And I've been getting a lot of downloads today. And I was wondering if some of them were actually downloads that I received because of what Ferris was going through or if they're legitimate. And I am asking that question before I share them. But I want to share what I got yesterday because it was so cool. And I'm just going to go back over here to my notes and and uh, that from the email here, um, just in case you missed yesterday's email, I emailed it again today, the same exact thing that I wrote. And this is all about creating a wave. Um, I got this you know, download after I started beating myself up over the meeting going, oh, I should have known that anytime you update anything, you've got to restart your computer. We started late. I didn't get to share the update of the prayer that I had written for Ferris. And I wanted to share that with everyone because we were talking on Sunday about prayer and the importance of prayer and how prayer doesn't have to be formal in any sense unless you want it to be. That is totally up to you. And I use a combination of both. If I have something very specific that uh, that's going on, then I like a written prayer. If I just want a conversation with God and just say, you know, God, Ferris needs you right now. You know, he's having this, this kind of a reaction to the medication. And if you'll just go be with him, send his guides, send Archangel Raphael and Michael for strength, you know, please just, just go be with him. He needs you. That's a prayer. That's a conversation with God. And it doesn't have to be anything big. But then we have our favorite prayers. You know, as I shared on Sunday, one of my favorites was uh, I was raised Catholic. And though I'm not Catholic now, I still like to talk to the Divine Mother and, and start off with, you know, Hail Mary full of grace. The Lord is with thee. It, it's just meaningful to me. So whatever is meaningful to you, that's what works in the moment. Let your feelings be your guide. So when I was talking to God about, you know, what was going on, all of a sudden, I heard God say to me, create a wave. And I thought, create what wave? You know, I just, I just want to set up time for everybody to get together offline, like uh, eight o'clock in the morning, everybody do their meditative prayer, however you feel is best. And we'll meet in the world viewer viewing room and, and we'll do it at the same time. And I heard again, no, create a wave. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. And I heard go for a walk. So I got outside with Gidget and we started walking and I was feeling so good and so energized. I started picking up my pace and I met with a neighbor friend and her dog um, that is a huge Samoyed, looks like Gidget only, you know, 50 times bigger <laughs> and, and beautiful. They're really cute when they're next to each other, you know, and I said, hi. And, and I said, well, I'm going to pick up the pace. So, so I started um, picking up my pace and I thought it'd be so nice to be training for an event right now. And for those of you who know me, you know, I'm a runner and I do marathons and half marathons. And, and um, I thought, you know, I, I think I would like to start training again. And I started picking up my pace a little more. And all of a sudden, it dawned on me what God was saying to me, creating a wave. When you're a marathoner, anybody who's ever done a marathon or half marathon or any distance event, even time 10Ks, they'll do this for, they put you in stalls and they release people, so many people at a time 
um, this is called a wave and they'll do the first gate and they'll release somebody or, or all those runners. And those are the most elite runners that are released first. And then, you know, everything is released based on time. So the first gate will be released and then five minutes later or three minutes later, it just depends on how big the race is, or maybe one minute later, they'll do the next gate and they keep doing that. And it creates this most magnificent energy that's so amazing. And that energy carries you through the entire race because it's, you know, the beginning of a race, you're gung ho and you're just like, yeah, I'm going to do this. And you get out there and, and every day, you know, or, or every mile you feel better and better until you get to mile 18. And for those of you who have ever done a marathon, you know that um, the second half of the race actually as even though it's um, 26 miles, 26.2 miles at 18, that's when the second half of the race really starts because then you start dragging butt. And it's that energy that you get at the beginning of the race that carries you through in those last eight miles of the full marathon or the last three miles if it's a half marathon, which is 13.1 um, uh, miles. So um, those last three miles are the ones, you know, depending on your training, that, that you start struggling a little bit. And then you pick up on that energy. Well, when we start a prayer chain like this, when we start a prayer group, everybody's gung-ho in the beginning. And then we start to fade, just like you do in a race. And it's how you start that keeps the momentum going. So creating a, a, a prayer wave will help the momentum to keep us going on those days when we go, I don't feel like going to the world viewing room. Or um, I'll just say, I bless you all and everybody's going to be fine, <laughs> you know, and you don't feel like doing it. Well, they need the energy too. Our loved ones need our energy and we must be present for them. We must be at this time because we have seen the magic with Ferris that happens when you have that divine energy focused on an individual. So we've got to keep it going. We've got to. And we've got to allow that wave to carry us through and to carry them through. And it's, it's magical. It's magical what happens. Um, I just look back at Ferris's journey when he first got sick and he went to the hospital and they released him right away and said nothing was wrong. And I knew that he was going to be dead in 24 hours to, to 48 hours. And so did Gary and so did his son. And all of us together created that wave that saved his life and made him stronger. And we witnessed it together on Zoom the following day when he had so much energy. And then it was just a few days later that he went in the hospital and they found out just how sick he was. So I just want to reiterate that for everyone because I truly want everyone to understand how remarkable prayer is and how remarkable healing energy is and how remarkable you know, healing light is, the divine light of the creator of all that is. And we can do that together. So what God has asked me to, to um, encourage you to do is to pray in waves. So if we set a time, for instance, an Eastern time, Eastern time prays at eight Eastern, you know, whatever our time is, you pray at that time. And so we're released all of our energy, whatever, that's giving me chills, whatever time zone you're in, that energy is going to be released to the people who need it most. And then 
an hour later, that energy is going to be released. And then an hour later, it's going to be released. And an hour later, it's going to be released. So whatever time zone you're in, I'm thinking, uh, now I'm an early riser. So if I get up and I decide that I want to do it at seven, well, that would be eight o'clock Eastern. So I'm still released with their energy. So if you want to do it earlier, that's fine. You're going to be with the other people. If you want to do it an hour later, that's fine too, because there'll be another gate releasing at that time. And wherever you are around the world, and I know we have people from all over the place, whatever eight o'clock in the morning is for you, that's when your gate is going to be released. Go to the world viewing room so that you can look out at the whole of the world and send that divine prayer and that divine healing energy. The, the Christ conscious energy of healing out into the world. And then once you do, then start getting really specific. Send your love to Mary who just lost her kitty yesterday. Send your love to Ferris. Who, who just had this surgery. To those of you who wrote me, um, we had people going through the same kind of surgery or, or similar surgery as Ferris. We have people who are dying of COVID-19. Send them specific and use their names if you know them. If not, you can say, God, you know who they are. Send them our love, our energy, our healing energy and let them know they are not alone. Even if they feel they're alone, they're not alone, we are with them. And let them feel that. For those who are dying of cancer or having other kinds of surgery, right now they are feeling alone, but they are not alone. They have us and they need to feel our wave. They need to feel our energy, folks. We, we are so needed. We are part of the light brigade. We are. We are part of the I am that I am. And it's, it's exciting. It fills me with so much love and just surrender to it. You know, yesterday that was, or Sunday, that was our word, surrender. Just surrender to that, that divine energy, that divine knowing, that divine understanding. It just, it fills me up. It fills me up. And before I start, um, before I share the prayer that I rewrote, I'd like to just have everyone, what are you getting? First of all, did I explain that clearly? So if anybody will raise their hand, any questions that you want me to answer for you? And I'm going to put my glasses back on so I can see everybody. <laughs> While we're waiting, uh, Penny says, love the wave idea. Also like a prayer relay, passing the baton to the next wave. Yeah. Yep. Same, same thing. Johanna, Hi. Hi, how are you? Oh, uh, is it going to be every day uh, for a certain amount of time? Are uh, you going to tell us? or? Yes, or... it'll be every day. And this is, this is offline. You don't have to get online. This is at your home, wherever you pray. I actually have a little yes. sanctuary set up and, and a little altar. And I light candles. Mm -hmm. Again, this I was raised Catholic, and there's still some of the Catholic traditions that I love. I still do Lent every year. You know, it's just some things that that I hold dear, even though I don't have the same belief system. So um, do it however you want to, starting at eight, whatever your time zone is, at eight o'clock. Mm -hmm. And okay. let's do. You know, uh, what's the time? 15 minutes? Right now, I'm two hours behind the Eastern time. You're two hours behind the Eastern? Yeah, yes. It looks like Mountain Standard Time is what you are, Joanna. Uh, well, I live in El Salvador, and um, I'm two hours behind New York or Florida. Okay. All right. So you would start at your 8 a.m., whatever that is. 
Okay. That's mm -hmm. when you would sure. do. And for time, that was the next thing that I wanted to ask everybody. How long do you want to go? It doesn't need to be an hour for them to feel it. You know, that burst of energy at the beginning of a marathon, you know, it is so fast. It's just boom, 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 boom. And it's just sent out so quickly. So we don't want it to go on and on and on because the next person's going to pick up. Our energy is going to last. It doesn't just, as soon as you're done praying, it goes away. It keeps going. So, you know, that's, <laughs> isn't that right? <laughs> Sure. You know, it keeps on going and then the next wave will come. What does okay. everybody else think? I'd love to know what everybody else is thinking on that. Um, Bernadette mm -hmm. has her hand up as well, just so you know. Okay, Bernadette, you want to come on? Okay, you can hear me? Yes, sure can. <laughs> How about... <laughs> Johanna, I'm going to mute you for just a second while we're... Okay. Okay. That way we don't get the feedback. Yeah. Eight o'clock sounds great, but me and Mike don't get up at eight in the morning because we go to bed like at two or three in the morning. <laughs> Can, Can we jump in on the next time? Because it's eight o'clock somewhere. <laughs> okay, so we can just pick a time. Because You can like, just pick a time. We're, we're going to have to set an alarm and then we get up. We look at each other like, uh... <laughs> Well, that's the reason I didn't do it at seven. Actually, I get up at six o'clock. So I'm a very early riser. Well, sometimes yeah. we're going to bed at that time. So it just depends. We've been working on a project in the garage and um, we, by the time we get to bed, it's like way morning. Midnight in the morning. <laughs> and, okay. So anytime we'll just set an intention that our light is going to be bright at that time and we'll do you know 15 minutes half hour our wave us. will carry on to the next morning mm -hmm. okay. yes. <laughs> yes and and again do you think for me it's 15 minutes it can be 30 if you feel in a particular pull mm -hmm. um that's usually one, what we do okay yeah you go by you know start off with 15 minutes is what i'm thinking mm -hmm. and for days when there's not a lot going on that will feel right. You'll know when to end. That's what I feel. Yeah, and see, that's- There a, are days, there is a surge coming of where we're gonna need a lot of prayer and it's gonna need to be longer. And that's what I was told today. There is something big that's about to happen that, um, that I don't fully understand yet. Again, that is the download that I'm getting. It's very big and it's gonna be, um, and it can potentially be devastating. And that is, is everyone feeling that same thing? So everybody got the same download? I haven't gotten that. You haven't? Okay. Yeah, some of us are getting it and I'm feeling like, okay, what is this about? And can it be stopped? And I believe that we can stop whatever it is or we can slow it down because it feels like a freight train. And I was like, okay, am I hearing this right or am I freaked out about Ferris? And I kept trying to separate it out. And I'm told, no, it is a separate thing altogether and it's coming. Well, and it is this. I guess yeah. what we're going to do is when we go into meditations, we usually do it morning and afternoon. But maybe we can just, I'm feeling kind of like I just want to send love to whatever this is. Uh, whatever is showing up, if we can all embrace it and just send it some good energy, whatever it is, maybe it'll at least lessen the effects that it won't be so traumatic. Mm. You know, I, I will get more information today because of what's going on with Ferris. I, it didn't come through clearly. And sometimes it takes days. And sometimes, you know, I guess it's the way that my brain works. That's why God talks to me like he does and gives me words, you know, create a wave. What? <laughs> and, and then sends me on a mission to go figure it out, you know? <laughs> well, Your mission you. if you so choose it, if you so, <laughs> if you so choose is to get out and walk. And you'll figure yeah. it out. You know, it's just stuff like that. It's it's like a, a treasure hunt or something. Yeah. I don't know. We get, I get that too. Do Sometimes you? I'll just be doing something and I'll get this inkling that I've got to go do something else. And I'll just go there and there's like a piece or there's something that's not right. And, you know, it's just, I just, we just go with our intuition most of the time is how we live. So. Yeah. And that's, that's what it is. And this, 
you know, where you are, this may not affect you as much. So you might not be feeling it. It might, you know, for Johanna and I, we might be feeling it because um, of that it might be something that affects us. I don't know. You know, I just, I just don't know at this point. I don't have a clear picture, but I will get it. I always do. Mm -hmm. I'm just glad for the confirmation. Okay, good. Okay, is there anyone else? Do, how do um, they? How do you feel, anybody? Okay, a lot of people have said ten to fifty minutes sounds uh, great. Um, I personally feel that it's depending on you on how how long you you feel of, of being in that meditative state. I think the most important thing is the intention of what uh, is you're trying to create. Um, Penny uh, was unclear as to the first part about what you uh, said about fe feeling something um, and asked if you could please repeat it, but I'm getting that you're not clear as to what it is. You just feel something if that is, Correct. If you could just yeah, is she saying about the event that's coming? Yes, she's saying uh, she she's not uh, she missed that uh, that part and she wanted to get a, a further clarification. Okay, I just um, feeling that something's coming. Um, okay, she literally didn't hear what I was saying. Okay, I'm getting the feeling that something is coming, and I don't know what it is. And I was even hesitant to bring it up today, but I felt like I was supposed to, because if I'm getting it, you're getting it too. Those of you who are very sensitive, you know, I'm, I've said all along, this community is not just about what I'm getting. We are all being called. Look at my goosebumps. If I had hair, they would be standing up. Um, <laughs> um, I, I just, you know, I, I just want to know what you all are feeling and what this is and how we can block it from coming because okay. it has the potential to be really a big thing. Um, um, it's of truth, nothing to fear. And Rebecca, can you explain what you mean? And um, Elaine, oh, Elaine said, what community is this? This is Energized Living Today. And we, okay. are, we are very spiritual beings. <laughs> um, everyone on this call is very spiritual. They're very sensitive. We have a lot of people who would be um, highly intuitive. Other people, you might say they're, they're clairvoyant, clairaudient, clairsentient. You know, Claire, what, what's the other Claire? <laughs> Claire Cognitive. Claire, yeah, Claire Cognitive. Um, Elaine did also mention earlier that it's so good to see other people's faces. I've been self-isolating since March 11th. Had telehealth visit with primary care physician April 29th, and he does not want me to venture into the world until May 21st. Please pray for me that I'll be okay when I go back outside into society. Oh, thank you. Yes. Yes, we will. Um, she did also mention that it might be an asteroid that is headed for Earth, but I'm not, uh, I'm not personally getting that. Um, I'm not uh, getting anything about that. Yeah, okay. Rebecca says, uh, I'm reading this, uh, is I've been told to please do not be afraid and be open to the oneness. Now, that's why we're doing this, is to block whatever that is. You know, one time, um, my friend Renee, she had this feeling that she was being robbed. And she, she I mean, she said it was so overwhelming that, that she was afraid to go home. So she stopped and picked up a friend and went to her house together and nothing was going on. She said, so I guess the feeling didn't mean anything. And I said, Renee, you stopped it. You, your, your knowing told you ahead of time what was coming and, you, and it caused you to stop and pick up a friend and whatever was going to happen never happened because you blocked it. And she got chills all over and she went, oh my gosh, I never even considered that. 
we can block this. We can stop this. That's what this is about. Or we can at least lessen it. If this is part of a divine contract, you know, a spiritual growth, we might not be able to skid it to a halt, but we can stop it to the point where, where it's not going to be such a calamity. And I just believe that wholeheartedly. Okay, uh, what does it say? Um, DJ says, one person of faith is stronger than millions who are not. Um, Penny mentions that, you know, she's wondering if it's a symbolic meaning about the asteroid about to hit. Um, could it be a, a, a symbolic versus an actual asteroid hit, uh, hitting? It could be, um, think about that while I read uh, Cherry's comment, okay? Okay. <laughs> um, since this started, I have the sense that we are in end times. However, I think the timelines may be way more stretched than we have perhaps been conditioned to think. If we have been immersed in predictions like Revelation, I think timelines are the trickiest thing to get right. Um, one of the things that, you know, when I first started exploring spirituality from a non-religious point of view. I, I started, I went back and started learning about the history of the Bible. It fascinated me. And Ferris and I did this journey together and did these classes. And one of the things I never considered was that Jesus was apocalyptic. And his message was that the world was going to end. And that's why they said, you know, don't concern yourself about getting married and these things focus on God because the world's about to end. And they thought it was going to be now. And that's where people are coming from today. Is it going to be now? Is this, is this a potential, you know, is this a potential time? Is it really going to be end of days? Or was it like Jesus? Because this repeats, this cycle repeats and repeats and repeats. I don't think it's like the end of the earth, but I do think it's a, the end of a way of being. Look at what the truth ended up being with Jesus. It started a whole new journey for the world and understanding that God was not vengeance. You know, the, the whole vengeance is mine, saith the Lord changed with Jesus. With Jesus came Christ consciousness and coming from love and understanding that God was about love. So apocalyptic in the way that this old way of being was no more, that vengeance was no more and love was the way. Love was the truth and the light. So while we might feel this apocalyptic um, time in our lives, yes, we're going to have to let go of some things. Those are the things that do not serve us. And we as light beings can direct this. We can. We can make a difference. I know it's true. I know it's true. So I want to hear what everybody else is, is getting from this. Um, okay, Rebecca says, I understand that it may be emotional shock and awe, not physically, and will be in answer to what we are trying to heal. Um, yes, our world is not ever going to be the, the way it was in a good way. Divine love and benevolent compassion. Um, Cherry says, not the end of the world, but the apocalypse, which from the Greek means the unveiling. Yes. And I, I actually like that, Cherry. I like that very much. That is beautifully um, said. That is really beautifully said. But I, I wanted to say something because uh, when, I, when I first saw the email, Create a Wave, um, it was kind of interesting because, you know, you're creating the wave of having people like do prayers at a certain time. And the, the YouTube video that I, I uh, the link that I posted in the group that I sent to you, in text message. Uh, I'm actually, I know the, the person, he's a, a documentary filmmaker and he did a TED talk um, about his experience of this Oscar nominated 
docu best foreign film that was nominated and, and his journey of how he made it because he's from Syria and uh, he and he his encouragement was like he wanted to tell the story of what was going on there and uh, it's a wonderful documentary to watch but at the end of it he was saying you know each one of us has um, uh, a message or has a I I'm not quite <laughs> it, it keeps only what he's saying so if you have if you're in the private group uh go have a look at it if not it's on youtube um and uh, yeah i didn't was, get a chance because i was on with the doctors all day or yeah Paris. don't worry yeah. don't worry but it's it was a very inspiring because it was his journey of how he got this film made he had to go through such a journey and 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 the country and on what is going on and uh, but at the end, it was like, you know what, no matter what you do, whether it's in your community or you're a community leader or like you, uh, it's like we each should share the message uh, to the people uh, around us. And, uh, and, and that's why I shared it because it's like it's about like we each create our own waves. So yeah. it's not and, just about and you, you brought up something and a really, really important ask other people to do this too. It doesn't just have to be people in this community. And I know that Mary um, Bossy, she, she has a group that she does a meditative group in the mornings and you can jump in with them. You don't have to do it on your own. This is not something you have to do by yourself. They're creating a wave too. So if you have a group at a specific time, as long as we keep this wave going, I'm just setting, you know, I'm, I'm setting up the gates. Remember what it, the, the first big download that I got is, you know, you are the gate, the gates opening, the gate of truth. This, this gate opens to the path of truth, you know, and that's what's opening. And so these are more gates that are opening and creating the wave. Again, you know, if you've ever been to a sports event, you know what that's like. You get in there and that energy in the room, you're just going, yeah, <laughs> you know, for your team, whatever it is, and you just feel like you're part of that energy. Well, you are. And so however you get into this race, and um, a race, by the way, doesn't mean you have to run. You know, there are times that I do a meditative walk. There are times that I sit. Um, I like to actually move. I like to garden when I meditate or, you know, I'm just, um, when I start, I always start at my altar and then I will move because, because I'm a hyper person and I love to move my body. I love to honor and feel my body as it moves. Some people prefer to just sit really still. That is completely up to you. It's still offers that wave of energy and with whatever group you belong to, you know, that other than this. Um, let's see here, iPhone, the wave is the go with the flow, do not resist. Yeah, yeah. I will remember to pray at eight. <laughs> the gates open. Yep. <laughs> you know, in a marathon, it's usually, you know, 6 7 o'clock, depending on how hot it's going to get in that particular area and you know that's the, you know the the elite people are like i said they're the ones that start off they're the ones that i could say okay i'm going to be in gate you know 25 <laughs> way back here <laughs> and uh and you can run to the finish line and bring me back some water and i'll be about a mile from here <laughs> they're just too out of the gate so there are people that are like that and then there are other people that you know they want to do it more slow and relaxing you know um jay am i was talking about him this you know on sunday and how it just his program the way of the heart just popped up on my phone i didn't mean to play it you know i just it just started playing on my phone and if you've ever done any work with him he is very slow and he wants to consider every word, you know, I'm very deliberate. And for those people, they don't want to be in the first gate. You know, they want to be in a later gate. So if that's you,
get whatever gait you're comfortable in. But if we each do it at a specific time, again, it's all about creating the energy. You know, and it's fast, it's slow. You know, a storm, you go out in a storm and, you know, all of a sudden the wind kicks up really fast and it just blows and it gives you this gust of energy that just kind of pushes your body for a moment. And then it slows down and then it gets faster again. And all of it is just, you know, it's invigorating. At least I find it invigorating. I love storms. Um, running is the same way. I don't just run a consistent run. I am a person that does, I do burst training. And I have four different implied, uh, imposed demands on my body where I do, um, you know, I start off with a run and then I'll race walk and then I'll speed walk and then I'll jog for a little bit. And then I'll, they'll do some burst, you know, training. Uh, stuff. So I do all these different imposed demands to work different muscles. That's the way that I like to do it. And some people just want that consistent run the whole time. So how you do it doesn't matter. It's that you do it that matters. Okay, more, okay. Andrew? Um, I'll get uh, Tani to come on and, and she could talk her com about her comment that she made okay. about chat with Bob. All right, are you there? Is it Tony? Yeah, to Tony. Yeah, if you want to unmute Tony. yourself, Tony. Oh, did I? Hi. Hi. It's so good to see you. It's so good to be back. Yay. All my students graduated virtually. All right. Great. Congratulations. I had students call me in various states of breakdown and despair, and I'm afraid, and I'm not going to make it. And the registrar just realized I'm a credit short and can you give me a special assignment to earn a credit in 10 days? And I made it. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yay. <laughs> well, I've been thinking about you and all that you have to do virtually. What a different world, isn't it? Yes. Because I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm not techie and I could have, I thought I was going to be traumatized, and I, I was able to teach my classes. I could only do one or two things. You see, I still can't remember how to unmute, so <laughs> the students chuckled and laughed, and they were like, Dr. King, over there, over there, or move your cursor over there. Anyway, um, my comment was, I was sitting here feeling a little left out because I did not have that feeling of anticipating anything that was going to happen in life. I am, everybody's sensitive and I'm like dull and I should be knowing things. And then you said the word claircognitive. And I thought, hmm, that's me. Uh, I thought, a part of me knew I was being silly when I felt left out, but a part of me loved it because I liked the wine and that was fun. But uh, when, I, when you said claircognitive, I thought, I get a lot of things where it kind of comes into my mind body, like they're not separated. Mm -hmm. uh, especially if I dance or if I just do stuff. When you're talking, a lot of times, Cindy, I want to do stuff. Like you'll say something and I'll be happy and I'll be like, yay, yay, yay. <laughs> yeah, and I'll just, I, my body is like a mind. So, as we were all talking, I was listening to everyone, beautiful, brilliant people and loving people. I, uh, I realized I was afraid and I'm very, very easygoing. I don't do a lot of worrying, usually about getting work done, but not about life. And I've been afraid for a while and nothing is really working no matter how peaceful I get, as soon as I'm done, even while I'm in a higher vibration, the worrying about the world, the worrying about the world. And I'll, I'll do the uh, world viewing experience, world viewing room, and I'll calm the waters. But something is trying to get through. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was me, but I think, I, I think it's the world and this thing that's going to happen. And as we were talking about being light beings, a certainty came through me, like my whole being. 
and it said, meet it with love. And that is the lesson and it will make a difference. Mm -hmm. And then I felt this great peace and it was like the, the worry thing said, that's what we've been waiting for you to get. It doesn't mean I won't worry again about the world, but it, my active thing to do is going to be um, meet it with love. And that's been happening every time I get annoyed. Like when my husband annoys me, I, I have been responding like, okay, you need to meet that with love because this is not a time in the world to meet it with your old habits. And I've been practicing and we've been like, you know how you fall in love again and again? Yeah. Over the years? And we're falling in love because the more I do that, the more he lightens and rises. At any rate, that was the certainty that came through me. And then I began to sit here feeling delighted. And then when I'm delighted, I usually want to dance. And I thought, oh, you can pray any way you want. I can dance my prayer. I can do See, I, I dance all the I time. I can dance my prayer, right? And so that, thank you, Andrew, that is kind of what I was feeling. And thank you, uh, I think it was Elaine. Thank you so much, Elaine. That was so sweet and kind. What is she saying? I gotta put my glasses on so I can see. It's actually Rebecca that said, oh my God, oh my goodness, that's the message. Meet it with love, me too, that's the message. Meet it with love and not the anger head. God calls it the anger head. And I, that comes through every time. I'm like, that's an interesting phrase, isn't it? The anger head. Um, and when you get, ha you, you don't get angry in your heart. You get angry in your head and then it drops into the heart and that dis-ease can cause disease. It can disease the heart. And that is, that's been shown again and again on all kinds of study. Um, for people who are explosive, you know, high blood pressure, heart disease, you know, stuff like that for people that hold everything inside and they don't share and they're thinking all the time, it drops into their body and it's more likely to become cancer. You know, when I went through the National Institute of Whole Health at Harvard, that was, you know, there was a whole study they shared with us on our emotions and what disease it's likely to even cause within our bodies. So if we stay focused on love in the heart that's christ consciousness that's divine light that was the apocalypse the end of the um you know the the god is the, the vengeance you know uh, a, a revengeful god you know all of that ended when jesus was born that was his role and that you know, that is just so clear to me. And that's when we came into love consciousness. So we've got that choice. So that was that apocalypse. Aren't we at the same place? Aren't we at the same place? You know, I'm going to um, get political for just a second here. And this is political around the world, not just in the United States. Everybody has been asking for change. Whatever the country in, they didn't like their government. They want change. Everybody was asking for change and nobody was specific or rarely was somebody specific. I want the change to look like this, 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 this. And so we got what we got. We, if we want something, we must be specific. And for those of us who are activists, and I'm an activist, and I know that we have other activists that are here. And if you're an activist, get out there and, and act. If you see wrongdoing, it's okay to, to go into that fight. It is okay. Just fight from the heart. And remember, this is part of a soul contract that's creating change for this world. But if we come from the anger head, 
we're going to make ourselves sick and we're going to make the world more sick. If we come from the heart, that heals. That heals. Okay. Uh, you want to go ahead and read the comments? Um, yeah. Uh, Joan, do you want to come on and talk with your comment? Unmute yourself. <laughs> You're testing me, aren't you? I know you are. <laughs> you know I am tech no, no. Unsavvy. <laughs> well, obviously I am too. I didn't realize that the update would cancel all my meetings. So there you have it, you know. So I'm going with Tony for goodness sake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what anyway, were you yes. share? Um, so there are a couple of things, you know, in quantum physics and also in um, the ph philosophy of yoga and the Kabbalah, they all sort of kind of turn around the same access point. And the point is that everything has to start from within because we are um, core and also we are co-creating. So whatever you imagine, you can create as long as it's coming from the heart. If you are imagining something that's terrible, upsetting, frightening, distasteful, threatening, dangerous, ter terrifying, any of these, they have a point at the back of the head here, just below in the cerebellum, just below that medulla oblongata, there's a little point there called the vagus nerve. We all know about the Vegas. I talk about this thing constantly in my classes and everybody knows about it. It is, it is a coordinator and it is a director. Whatever emotions and thoughts, once it becomes an emotion, it goes through that filter and that point is sent to an organ. If it is anger and resentment, it is sent to your liver. If it is fear and shame, it goes to the kidney and so on and so on and so on. If it is unrequited love and the lacking of emotional support where you feel you're being unloved, and these are the words, I am not loved, I want to be loved, I am seeking love, I am alone, any of these, it's heart connected. That is your heart and that actually starts you putting up something called a heart wall and one of the side effects of a heart wall is hardening of the arteries in the heart this is crazy stuff and we are actually creating this by our thought by the seed thought you know in yoga we call it a seed thought okay and then it becomes a feeling. And once it, once it progresses into an emotion, it's alive and it's on a train now. It's going somewhere. It's, and that train's not stopping. It's going somewhere. Okay? So you wouldn't believe this. Uh, there was a terrible hurricane about six years ago that came from Venezuela and it was heading towards Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean. The people there are the majority of them are already Catholic and then Christians and then other, you know, uh, religious domination. And so, but they all seem to get along really well. Anyway, when they heard about this, it's always the women, to be honest. So sorry, Andrew. <laughs> so all the women got together in groups and some of them had um, what they call midnight groups. So they would stay in somebody's home and they had a, a sort of a really prayer system going. And this hurricane was heading straight for the capital. And the next day when they expect, some of the men went to um, what, what we call over here pubs. I don't know, you must know about pubs, right? Yes. Right. So that was the happy hour thing, you know. So they're praying this way. We you get your holics? Yeah. <laughs> yes. And the next day when this thing was supposed to land, it went Trinidad and Tobago, two islands. It went through the two islands and hit neither. Neither. Mm -hmm. 
So the locals there now say happily, ah, well, we never have to worry again because God is a Trinidadian. <laughs> so that's the moral of the story. Yeah. And I can tell you something, it sounds funny, but anytime there's a crisis, that's what they do. So Oxford University recently, um, last week, graded the countries around the world on how they have, they have handled COVID-19. Trinidad and Tobago was graded as number two. Wow, who's number one? Um, I think in all the Caribbean islands collectively, yeah, there were 70 dead. Wow, wow. Yep, 70. And in Trinidad, they started testing people, everyone who came through the airport right away. And they had a unit there because my sister came to the UK to visit. And when she went back, they put them all in a line and tested everybody. And they didn't have all the masks and the sanitizers and stuff available there. But like Trinidadians and West Indians on the whole, families got together, my sister got together and she made everybody a mask. And then they have a thing where they get together and they make this old fashioned solution of uh, medicinal peroxide. I don't know if you all know about that. Yeah. Okay. Medicinal peroxide and glycerin. And that is much more effective as a sanitizer than what we sell here in the UK. Wow. And so they were just doing the old fashioned stuff. Lots of aloe raw yeah, turmeric got, i just bought three more aloe plants and just clipped yeah, off them yeah, yesterday yeah, yeah, to make yeah. my own stuff that i yeah have with me that, and that's the way really but the yeah. thing is that is only for the physical and the more important thing for all of us and you all have it in bundles you should you all, everybody here could be selling this stuff and what is it it's a core belief an ideology that comes from the heart and that's it and that's, that's the, why that's the cure when when i mention something if you notice it's pretty benign yes. i feel something coming mm -hmm. that's my internal geiger counter mm -hmm. that we all have that's an instinct just like you know i was watching my cats out back and, mm -hmm. and um, there was a critter that was out in, in the back and to come in our way. And immediately, you know, the, uh, Gracie headed Ferris's cat off at the pass because he's new here and he doesn't know the woods and headed him off so to, to protect him. Not out of fear, but out of love, out of protection. Mm -hmm. There's a new kitty, a new baby in town. Gotta mm -hmm. make sure that baby's fast. Mm -hmm. or, or safe and and so she just kind of raced and blocked him from going in that direction because he didn't know mm -hmm. so you know our in human nature if we allow that to penetrate that we feel that fear instead of going like the feeling i got today i went oh what's that about i didn't take it on i felt it in my body but i did not take it on and so I can be rather benign about it and go, what this, what's this about and what can I do about it? And that was something that I always got from my dad. You know, whenever we did something wrong, he'd, we'd want to cry and throw a fit. And he'd say, so what are you going to do about it? What's your next step? And he always moved us forward. So I have this, you know, my whole life I've been saying, you know, if I get that feeling, okay, so what do I do about it? What can we do? We can create a wave. And as soon as I ask, so what do we do about this? What's going on? I'm asked. To so when you mentioned that. about that wave thing, I immediately, because you know, the thing is, I've studied Buddhism and the Kabbalah for a while now, and it all sort of just, everything just came back and thought, oh my God, she stepped into that. That's an ancient belief in the Kabbalah and also in um, the core of the Black Vedas and the Vedas that come out of India. Um, the creation stemmed from, they said, from light that exploded and then you had sound vibration created and of course it was a wave mm -hmm. creation started with a wave 
And out of the wave was that word. They believe this is what their belief is. The word was om. Mm -hmm. That was the first sound in the omniverse. And then it went on non-matter and then into matter. Purusha and Prakriti, it's what it's called in Sanskrit, you know, but everything's going in a wave. And I thought, my God, I wonder if she's, she knows she's talking about some really seriously ancient stuff here with waves, cycles and waves, because according to them, we are, we are coming to the end of the Kali Yuga, which is a cycle or a wave, and there's a frequency. Everything is a wave, everything. I thought, well, oh my energy. gosh, she's gone into some deep stuff here. <laughs> Yep, I love it. And and everybody's saying thank you. <laughs> and I agree with Tony because the answer really is that little four letter word that we ascribe to so many silly things. And I always wonder when you hear people saying, Oh my God, I love that ice cream. Why would you take a word like love and say ice cream and love? Are you serious? Oh gosh, did you see this guy? One of my neighbors. And he has a Maserati. And people go, I love that car. Really? You love a car? This is a powerful word. It can heal everything. When, so, yeah, Tony was on the ball. When you say, you know, I love ice cream or I love pickle juice. <laughs> you know, whatever oh. it is that. <laughs> or Horlicks. Loves, you know, but you can say, you know, it's the way it dances on my tongue. It's, it's the experience. Like I'll mm. go to get my husband that loves ice cream. He, he loves ice cream. He loves the experience. And when I watch how Sarah and him you, you would interact with each other when she was little, and it was this whole beautiful dance that they did, going mm. and looking at all the different ice creams. Which one are you going to try? Can I try mm. this one and that one? And it was the experience of it. I don't know that he really loves the taste mm. or anything else, but it was the experience that it created. So what is the experience that a fast car creates or a run? You know, I love running because I love how my body feels. That's why I ride a motorcycle. You know, it's the same sensation of the wind hitting your body as you're out moving. Gary and I went for a long ride last but night. But it's not really the running, though, is it, though, Cindy? When it's you do anything in motion, we have two forms of energy. It's either static or dynamic. And energy is prana or chi. Yeah. And the force of chi is God. And, and interesting, you should bring that up because mm -hmm. what I do primarily is chi running and chi, chi walking. Exactly. Which is, you know, leaning into your run so that you're not upright, which puts a lot of pressure on the body and you actually lean into your run and it propels you forward and it takes all, people say, but you broke your neck, how can you get out there and run? Because mm -hmm. of how I do it and everything yeah. is, is chi. And mm -hmm. my, that's why my, my address uh, for my races are chi to run, you know, ah. at, at dot com. So I put that because I use chi to get out there. And that's, mm. um, some people even call me chi chi. Ah, <laughs> it's powerful. It's all about the chi. So you're right. Yeah. I shut up now. No, I love it. No. I love, <laughs> it's like a confirmation, Joan, that everything you're saying is a confirmation and, the thing that I said is we will always get confirmation whenever we're feeling something, whenever, you know, we're experiencing these things, we will always get confirmation from somebody in our community and even outside our community. And, you know, you're, you're telling me that I'm picking up on something that's been around for a long time. That's big. Ancient. Really, really. I don't know anything about, you know, it's so, so ancient. It, it's, but, but, we all know this at the deepest level of our beingness. We, we all, nobody here is not aware of this at some different level. And that's what's so wonderful because it's not very, no, let me see if I could rephrase that. It is much more all embracing that somebody will bring a different point to the table. I see it as a jigsaw puzzle and each part is as important as the other and different 
and that's what we are. That's it. And Cindy Weber and I were talking the other night and I said, it's like, you know, you look at the back of a watch, you know, the, the, the beautiful Swiss watches and you open them up and you see all these cogs that mm. each one make it work seamlessly in time. Absolutely. Letting us keep track of time. Absolutely. And, and it's a timeless timepiece. We've heard that again and again. Yes. And so together we're a timeless timepiece where yeah. all the cogs keep everything running. And we need and every single one there. Yeah. When one slips out, so there's a belief system in India that when a family uh, link is broken, the whole thing starts to do this. Mm -hmm. It starts to move. But they also believe in reincarnation. So they realize, they believe that they go to another vibrational level. And that, and, and I, I, I was trying to figure out a way of saying this to Mary, really, because I felt it for her when I read that just now, earlier on. And I know that my little boy comes back from that side quite often to me. And when I'm not acknowledging him, because he jumped on my bed one night, and that was a shocker, I didn't think that he had the power to transcend into matter again. I didn't think so. And that really shocked me. I thought I felt this thing on the bed and I'm very sensitive. So I jumped up and I thought somebody is in the room. What is in the room? And I looked around, everything was quiet. I could see very clearly. And I thought, what? Something jumped on the bed. And I thought, oh my God, it's Andre. And I, the minute I said, you are not supposed to be on the bed. You were never allowed in the bed. Get off. I felt something move. It was crazy. <laughs> That's why. <what I> <laughs> so, Mary, my love, this is what you're in for. They are never far away and they love you even more. That's very true. Mm. I still feel my band aid all the time. Yeah. And Maybe. somebody asked uh, just a moment ago about uh, Ferris's kitty Penny. And I can't get her to come in. We'll see her at the tree line. She was kind of close to the house yesterday. And, but as soon as you move towards her, she's off. And again, I think she was just a feral kitty. Ferris has probably pick, picked her up three times, he said, the whole time he's had her. And he said, I don't know that she's meant to be my cat. And so maybe she understands that. I don't know. And maybe she'll end up being somebody else's kitty. Maybe she'll be a neighbor kitty where everybody feeds her. You know, I, I don't know what her, what she's going to choose to do. But if I chase after or try to go after, she runs. So that's, that's where that is. And Ferris understood that about her. It was not a surprise to him at all. But Rascal is right by my side. He is a love butt. <laughs> mm. He's always around. Okay. Um, Kitty will let you know. Yes. Uh, anything else there that I've missed? Um, okay, uh, earlier, uh, there's, uh, uh, from Elaine, she's asked a couple of things. I'm going to read them. Uh, okay. Uh, one is, does anyone else in the group who's, be, who's being a light and when trying to shine that light to share with other beings feel an attack of darkness wanting to put out the light? Um, and then the second thing is about the chi. She wanted to know how to... I'm just going down. Uh, she wants to find out how do you, um, oh, where is it? Down at the bottom. <laughs> well, she wanted to find out how to strengthen your chi. Is basically what she was, uh, uh, what was the gist of what she was asking. So probably well, start we're gonna, with that. We're going to ask Joan to come on, well, Thursday. Are we going to still try and do a call on Thursday? Or do we want to do that other meditation? I don't, are you I'm asking me to come back and and she's going to teach us this right Joan and you said you would do breathing mm. okay will you do that yeah if you want yes I would but love I that. thought I thought you all wanted to do, to do the meditation you talked about yes th well that's what I'm saying this Thursday let's cancel that one and and let's send out a link so all of us go and go on that meditation hmm. but let's plan a time okay like, even Friday night. Are you on on Friday night or what time zone are you on? 
She's in uh, England time, GMT yeah. time. GMT. So you're four hours. No. So no, she's, I'm they, eight they, hours they, ahead of Pacific time, uh, five hours ahead of Eastern time, I think. It's six oh. hours ahead of your time, Cindy. Yeah. I'm oh, way God. ahead of the crowd. You are. So in you'll be time. Doing, you'll be starting that wave. You guys are in the front. <laughs> <laughs> you're in the front of that wave. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, Australia is the worst one, actually. They're way out there. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we'll plan a time and we'll let everybody know because Friday is at six o'clock and that's going to be kind of late for you, isn't it? No, that's the normal time that I do with BJ. Would you believe? Well, then let's do it. You want to do it? Clock in the morning is the norm. <laughs> okay. Well, if that's okay with you, would you, would you do that? Yeah, we'll do that Friday night, everybody. So we're going to have our Friday night. We're not going to do Thursday, but we are going to do the meditation. Um, Andrew's already sent me, or whoever it was, sent me the link so that we'll be able to put it in the newsletter and send it out to everybody. Uh, that link, I think, is to something different that's in the, the chat. I posted oh. the, the uh, I posted in the, uh, the Facebook group, the private group. I did post the, the link for the the world meditation thing that's happening at, yes. at 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. Uh, it's like Deepak Chopra and all, like everyone. Yes. Uh, it, it's because it's World Meditation Day on, on Thursday. And so there's this huge gathering is what Cindy's talking about. But if you want me to email it to you so you have it, Cindy. Yes, uh, so I could go ahead and email it. That would be great, Andrew. And, and, and then, I, I discovered something for those that are interested. If there's anything in the chat that you want, uh, you can actually save at the end you, before we exit. You can actually save the, the, the chat transcript onto your own computer yourself, just in case you didn't know that. I discovered that the other day. I was like, oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> so, oh. yeah, it's, it's those okay. Uh, there's a three little dots. And you click on that, and it'll say "Save Chat." Uh, down, like, like when you open the chat to do the chat. Um, but, anyways, um, so um, so Elaine's question will be answered uh, by Joan uh, with the Chi Energy on Friday night. Um, and if you don't mind, I would. Uh, should. Do you want to talk about the like energy, like the dark? You know, uh, I think she was asking uh, about the feeling of. We we can talk a little more about that later when we get more clarification. Okay. Because when it bumps up against me again, I don't let it in me. It just bumps up against me. It's like it pushes me. You know, just like a wind, and it just kind of pushes up against you. And and it could be fear if I let it, but mm. even if I feel the fear it's what's this about what is it telling me because fear is an instinct the right kind of fear is an instinct just like what gracie did when she was protecting rascal and you know her fear was he was going to get hurt because he doesn't know the woods and she blocked him so she took action so we can take action instead of you know that's the time to bring it into the head actually the left brain because the left brain is linear logical unemotional the ne you know the, the it never the left brain never had an original thought it just whatever we put there is what's there it's memory it's language so you put it in the left brain and you say, and you start asking really great questions to it. What is this about? How come um, this feeling is trying to bump into me? And, and process it there. If you put it in the right brain, the right brain is super creative and you're gonna have all kinds of tsunamis happening everywhere. You know, you're gonna have t killer bees and t all kinds of stuff happening if you put it in the right brain. So don't put it in the right brain put it in the left brain because the left brain is is your unemotional side of the brain do you agree with that joan in yoga um we we believe that you have four four minds not not two people think of just two the conscious and the unconscious or the subconscious yeah. but in order to get um what we're really going for is working from intuition and downloading inspiration Mm -hmm. When you go into the mind, 
and you, you particularly get led by the ego, it's always based on some past experience. It does not download. And so we say, you breathe into the third eye and you go higher. You always go higher so you can download. Inspiration does not come from your mind. You never get inspiration. That is not, God does not work through the mind. God works through your consciousness, which is connected to your heart. Yeah. As Tony was saying, it's the love thing. Yeah. You know? You know what? Ferris's poem or, or prayer that I had rewritten for everybody, it's not feeling right, but it is feeling right to ask Joan to lead us in a meditation, if she will. Are you up for it, Joan? Sure. It's, it's feeling really right to do that because I, and I'm getting truth bumps here to lead off. We are now at the front of the pack. We're all together. And I want to launch this energy, this wave of energy that's going to carry us every day. And then tomorrow, whatever eight o'clock is for you, unless you get up early, like I will, I'll be, I'll be meditating with the people on Eastern time because I'm an early riser. And, and so start us off on that wave that's going to continue. And then we'll get that super booster on, uh, on Thursday, on world meditation day, you know, when we all come together in this group that we're going to join, and then we'll get this like big, huge wave of energy. And then mm. the next day, the same thing, let's keep this energy going. So Joan, mm. does okay. that feel right to everybody? Okay. So relax sitting back in your chair. If it's at all possible, allow the soles of your feet to anchor into the floor. Bring your palms to face upwards. Relax your shoulders back and down. Head on straight. And allow the chin to slightly come down so that the back of the neck is elongated. As you take a soft, soft breath in now, Slowly exhale through the mouth and whisper your breath in a long, soft exhale and feel your body giving in to the relaxation. And do that again, inhaling a soft breath and a slow, long exhalation. Each time you exhale, feel the soles of your feet anchoring into the floor and imagine that you're sending roots from the soles of your feet, 12 strands from the right, 12 strands from the left of the soles of the feet, moving down into the earth. Imagine that as you go down into the earth, you have an image of Archangel Metatron's cube sometimes called the flower of life. Let these roots gently sink into this beautiful cube and draw up from this cube the energies of the sacred geometry that you need at this time. These are all coded as we are and they will enhance. This is a way to ground and enhance your pranic field or your chi in your body. Draw back these strands from the Metatron cube now slowly. Allow them to come back up and anchor back into the soles of your feet. You might begin to feel a bit of tingling or a reaction of heat. And this is that you have imagined and created this feeling of the effects of bringing in that pranic field into your body. It will now connect to the meridians that are anchored in your body and they will find their way to every organ inside of your body, including your brain now. As these beautiful and quiet, subtle energies permeate your body, take your mind into your heart and I'm going to count from 10 to 1 and when I reach to 1 you will be inside the chamber of your heart 10 9 8 7 6 
Moving in five, four, three, softly and slowly, two, one. Inside the chamber of your heart, see there a beautiful golden light. It is effervescent. It is beyond the ordinary light within the house or outside. It is almost like a mini version of the central sun, golden, iridescent, with little crystals sparkling all around and a beautiful auric energy of white around it. And this is your connection to source your cosmic Christ consciousness connection. This has always been there and you are just part of it. Now, as you get closer to this, this light begins to grow and expand in energy. And you can feel the effects of this all through your heart. Invited to go beyond your heart now going outside of the heart, up into your brain, up into all the cells of your brain, igniting, energizing, stimulating, calming, soothing. This light only works from the purest effervescence of love. It goes from the brain down through the body. Allow it to expand invited to go wherever maybe you need healing, stimulation, calming, soothing, whatever your wants and needs are, this light already knows, but when you invite it to work, it is amplified. The loving light is you in your purest essence. This is who we are at the soul level. It goes through the body. Now it goes outside of the body, invited to fill the room that you're in, going everywhere within the room. It spreads and ignites, glowing, growing, enhancing. It actually begins to purify the energy of the room. Allow it to do this. Invite it to move. Enjoy this aspiration that you're creating. You are co-creating. It goes beyond the room now. It fills the house. And as it goes beyond the house, it links in with all the other sentient being lights who are right now, someplace, somewhere, sometime, in the quantum field, also in meditation. And now we are going to form a beautiful glowing golden light orbing right around our beautiful earth. Healing, uplifting, calming, soothing the fears, the cares, the worries, the strife, the uncertainty, the illness that are caused by misaligned erroneous emotions, because this is all that there is, blockages that curtail our healing from this pure flow of pranic light from source. Allow your light to grow, magnify, and link in with all these other lights. At this purest spiritual level, there is no threat. There is only pure essence of love. And now think about all the other sentient beings on the other planets who are also supporting us at this time. The Pleiadians, the Syrians, the Arcturians, the Seed, star beings looking on, encouraging us to grow and to allow the spiritual force to move within us, 
you might be feeling a bit more tingling and heat and this is because you are linking in with their love and they only work from love allow this to grow and expand allow them to let them also support us in this we are bringing back from them a pure essence of love for our humanity for our planet for our animals plants for the purification of environment and any pollutants for the dissipation of viruses and illnesses and for most of all, the unification around our planet in love. Now gradually, gradually, with a peace, a little word of gratitude in your heart to these beings. We thank them for their support always. We thank our guides, our galactic family, our friends. We withdraw and slowly we come back, come back into our planetary quantum field. We come back into our homes, into the room that you're in. We bring back our essence back within our heart. We feel the enrichment there. And with deepest gratitude, we thank our cosmic Christ consciousness for all the support that is always flowing, yet never stops. A powerful love in its purest essence of which we are a part. Gradually bring your palms together and just rub them together. And feel yourself coming back within your physical aspect as a human being, full of light, full of love, and full of nourishment. Open your eyes. Welcome back. Wow. That was fabulous. Thank you. Oh, so healing so healing and I just want to continue that I feel that energy you know just creating and I want to just send that out to everyone that wrote in that asked for prayer told me their stories and I, I so send love to all of you every time that I read anything that you send so thank you for sending in your requests continue to send them and right now, I just want to send that love that we are feeling right now out to all of those people who are requesting our love, our support, our prayers. And so it is. And so it is. That was so beautiful. So beautiful, Joan. Thank you. How y'all feeling? Makes you want to dance, huh, Tony? <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna dance. <laughs> She's off. <laughs> Ooh, it just feels good. Tony is off. Oh, Tony is off. <laughs> Johanna, she's got her thumbs up. I love that, that you can do that. You can do the thumbs up on your phone. <laughs> Let's unmute everybody. Anybody want to say anything? Oh, it just feels so good. So it was beautiful. That was fantastic. Amazing. Thank you. 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 See the talent we have here, folks. See wow. the gifts that, that people Tom have. Is here I love with it us. When Thank you, Joan. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you for following guidance. Everybody's energy. You. You're welcome. <laughs>